I have my fitting for the movie today, and this guy's pouting. He wants to go to the park. Doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? Here's the shirt for today, just because I love it. I've always had this kind of habit of, uh, I have a CD player in my car, since it's kind of an old school car, it's a 2005. Um, I always just grab a CD and I just play it for like a month and just listen to it all the way through and just just live with that music for a month and this month it's been ELO ever since the concert. Then of course I have all this junk. I keep getting compliments on this, this bracelet, and these sunglasses. I love the sunglasses, that's kind of becoming my thing. I, I never would have expected green, but that's becoming the thing. Every single time I wear it, somebody asks me what the deal is with this watch. Here's the deal with this watch. I saw it one day on sale. They're usually pretty expensive, but I got it for like 40 or 50 bucks, brand new. Um, and the company's called Nuka out of San Francisco. Look at their website. They have tons of cool watches, and they don't all look like this, but they're all like kind of a digital binary kind of setup like this, but in various fashions. Wow, we are outside taking Jaw for his uh, morning pee and first walk of the day and the weather couldn't be better. It's just super calm. I prefer it overcast, but I can tell it's going to be really hot today just based on how this is now, but man, it's beautiful. I'm thinking today I want to do that uh, that vlog I was telling you. Somebody had requested to know about me. I think today's going to be that day because I've been running like crazy just working and doing research and filming locations and just trying to do so much stuff I kind of need a break today um, and plus I'm going to my fitting so I'll probably get you guys some footage from that or whatever but I don't know if I'm gonna hit any uh, special landmarks or anything today we'll see what I come across while I'm out uh, living life in LA days with Jordan the lion coming at you right now yeah also I think I may have found a better camera to start using um, pretty cheap on eBay it's only like 60 or 70 bucks but uh, just from the features and everything what I'm trying to do is is this I'm trying to bring a good quality vlog to you and I need a camera that I can get pretty much perfect pixelation and be able to see both sides so um, so that I can see, you know, I can see the screen of what I'm filming. So when I'm doing things like this, I can see that I'm in frame. And I also needed to either have a macro SD card or a, be able to convert to that because what I'm trying to do, my phone doesn't have a, a way to put memory in and out like it used to. I'm using the Galaxy Note 5, so I want to be able to put my macro SD card from the camera into my um, Amazon tablet and edit it on there. My computer is just not, like my computer is now outdated and I just can't do the editing on there. So that's the goal. Get a, get a, what I found I think is either a 20 or 24 megapixel camera and it has a uh, screen on both sides and a macro SD card. So hopefully that's what I'll be able to buy. Well, we're here for the fitting. Put this in and get it over with. Damn. Apparently I went to the wrong part of the building. Went to the front and you're supposed to go all the way to the back. This is the luxurious... Just playing the waiting game. Alright baby, I'm done. I looked at my hair, they said my hair was good for the shoot. I got my wardrobe. They always give you two wardrobe selections, so in case they want to change something or too many people on this set have the same color or who knows. They always give you two, but uh, I'm done. And I actually like one of the ones that they gave me. It's a period piece, like a 50s period piece. So that ought to be pretty cool. Um, it was kind of funny. And this just shows you what kind of reality I'm living in. On my way out, the very last thing I heard was them telling this kid who's cast in the movie that he's got to get his hair cut. And they were kind of like, the mom and him were kind of trying to see if there was a way around it. And they were, 
basically saying no for the period we need that haircut. And I heard the mom say to this kid who was easily six years old, well, that's your decision. It's your hair and your career. Welcome to Hollywood, baby. Well, I was passing by a Target and I thought, well, it'd be a lot easier to go here than to another one. I gotta get Joss some uh, dry dog food. Well, Target was a total fail for dog, dog food, for the dry dog food anyway. Here's what I don't understand. If you're Target, why would you make the only available options the ones that are constantly on the top 10 list of do not buy dog foods? The ones that are just made out of crap. And it was nothing but Purina and Beneful and literally all the brands that are on the list of do not buy. That's all they had, so I have to go to Ralph's. Somebody really has a beef with veganism. To each his own, man. Bigger things in the world to worry about than other people's eating habits. I'm trying to do a location of guys over here losing his mind. This is a sad one today, man. Because what this used to be, I'm not just showing you some gutted, destroyed, discount furniture place. Nope! What this was, and you might believe me, just based on that sign, it doesn't look like your average run-of-the-mill discount furniture store sign. Here's what it was. This property used to be Nudie's Hollywood. Yeah, this, uh, this property used to be Nudie's Hollywood, and I'm looking around because there used to be like a memorial sign for it. But if you don't know what Nudie's was, Nudie was... Nudie was a man who was a tailor who was famous because he made all those really interesting sequin and um, and rhinestone. Those really interesting sequin western outfits that everybody wore in the well, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. I mean, it was all the way up to Graham Parsons was kind of how I found out about it, but Graham Parsons was inspired by... Uh, Buck Owens and uh, Ernest Tubbs and guys like that who really spent money on their wardrobe. Here's a picture of the man himself, Nudie, sitting in his custom Cadillac and Hank Williams Jr. wearing a suit he made in the 40s. That's the Flying Burrito Brothers and the famous Elvis Gold suit. And he just did it forever. I mean, I think he died in the 70s or 80s and uh, and the family kind of kept the business going. Then they finally sold it to this place in 93. And, uh, and then it became a discount furniture store, which is sad, man, because a lot of people bought Nudie's outfits and a lot of people paid him to custom make uniforms and various things. And I just feel like this should have, this should have been a museum to Nudie. Let me see if I can find any signs or anything. They used to have one that kind of told the story of Nudie and, um, and they memorialized it as like in North Hollywood, that's what this NoHo thing is, North Hollywood District site of uh, history. Here's Nudie's on Lancashire in all its glory. That's one of the original custom tailoring tags. And the lovely Dolly Parton wearing a Nudie's original. He actually had two locations. One of them was uh, much further up the road. I th actually, I think he may have had one in Bakersfield as well, but this was the, the one that he moved to and that most of the people that we would know today that wore nudie suits, this is what they would normally have, uh, where they normally would have came and had, and nudie was not cheap, man. I mean, I occasionally find a nudie suit in a thrift store somewhere out here and they're always a few hundred dollars. I mean a few hundred dollars per article of clothing. As you can tell, he paid a terribly close attention to detail and had a really creative mind when it came to creating suits. That would have been the whole store. It was 5015 Lancashire Boulevard. That's a pretty big section of space. But like I said, you can tell by looking at that building, that is a Western style building. That was not. That was not put together for a furniture store. And I just don't see, I think they may have removed it. They used to have a historical placard for, for nudies. I'm gonna keep looking around here and see if I can find it. 
And I think I'll just close out this Nudie's vlog with a few pictures of Nudie's history and a little bit about who the man was and the man in his beautiful car. Thank you for your contribution to fashion, Nudie. The king of the rhinestones. I know that's not a real exciting location for a lot of people, but it's one that I looked up over the years because I wanted to go see if Nudie's was still around and it's kind of sad to see what it's become. I would have never probably worn one of those suits, though I would have loved to have owned one just for the historical factor. On second thought, what the hell was I saying? Of course if I had one of those suits, I'd wear it. I absolutely would wear it. I love Western wear and <clears throat> the only real apprehension I think I would have about wearing it would be I just wouldn't want anything to happen to it. But uh, yeah, man, like I said, every once in a while I'll be in a thrift store or like a vintage store and I'll see something with the nudies tag on it, a, a shirt or like a pair of gloves or just something. And it's always like 500 bucks or more. So fortunately I just can't afford that yet. But uh, he created some really out there stuff for Graham Parsons. He put, I mean, he based the suits off of what your personality was. So. Graham Parsons suit had pot leaves and naked women and like lips and various things. And then there's a the pink one that I showed you guys was the um, Keith Richards one that had the UFO on the back. The significance of that was that Graham Parsons and Keith Richards were best friends, and they used to hop on their motorcycles and drive out to Joshua Tree. And they would lay at a place now called Graham's Rock. They've kind of memorialized it as, well, the fans have. They used to go out there and lay there and they used to watch for UFOs together. And Graham Parsons was really the main person who got the Rolling Stones interested in doing kind of country music. He was around during that sticky fingers, let it bleed era. Well, I don't know if this is gonna get us anywhere or not, but I just did some uh, rummaging around online and I found Nudie's granddaughter who has his car, a bunch of his suits, she has the gold Elvis suit, um, and basically has dedicated her life to preserving Nudie's history. And she doesn't live too far from me. So I sent her an email and I asked her if I can come meet her at some point and, um, and vlog a day of Nudie's history and let her talk to us, kind of like the Kelly Rhodes vlog, like let her tell us stories, let her show us some of his stuff, and uh, man, that would just be an awesome companion to this. So keep your fingers crossed that, um, that she's willing to do it. Her name is Jamie and she's changed her last name to Nudie, Jamie Nudie or Jamie Cohn. So that shows how dedicated she is to keeping Nudie's history alive. Well, we're off to the grocery store. Got some more of the pumpkin ravioli. They were awesome.